How do you know this? That's what I do. I drink and I know things. Truth is, <laughs> I am Iron Man. Rose? Well, we're going, we don't need Rose. When people ask you what happened here, tell them the North remembers. And here we go. Welcome to Not Other Movie Pod. I'm Zach Williamson with Luke Goosens today. No Ross, because he's off on vacation out in Japan. So today we're talking Dr. Doodle and El Camino, a Breaking Bad movie. Also want to apologize in advance. My mic is having a few issues, so this might sound a little scratchy. No problem if you just end up cutting off. Big trailer that came out. Finally, Luke didn't even know this movie was in existence as of a month ago. We finally got the Doolittle trailer. <laughs> What's your honest takeaway from this? My first thing, my main thing, is that his Welsh accent is not good. Why did they have to go so serious with Dr. Doolittle? Is that just me? I Okay, so I've never seen the original Dr. Doolittle that came out in the 60s. I have no clue, but... Oh, there's an OG Dr. Doolittle? Yeah, there's that shit. And then there was the one that we grew up on, Eddie Murphy. That one definitely is more of a comedic take on it. Yeah, this one looks like a crazy adventure trying to be... I know. Like Pirates of the Caribbean kind of shit. I don't, I don't even know what to compare it to, honestly. Just way, way different than Eddie Murphy's take. I was about to say, is Dr. Doolittle allowed to be white? Yeah. Well, the Dude. first one, the first guy was white. I only know Eddie Murphy is Dr. Doolittle. <laughs> yeah. It's exactly. just weird if anyone else is Dr. Doolittle. And I don't know why he was trying to go for that accent. Could I felt like he could have done anything and no one would have cared. Yeah, he could have just been fucking his self. <laughs> and it would probably have been better. It's hard to take him seriously. Did he do an accent when he was Sherlock Holmes? I think he did a, is like a light British accent. Let's look that up. Yeah, this is some new shit. But anyway, it's just okay. So for listeners who don't know, this movie, this is through Universal. They threw a $175 million budget at this fucking film. So it's all to make animals, huh? Yeah, it has to be the animals. But the voice acting too, the, like the cast that they got for that is crazy. I don't yeah. have that in front of me right now. That Let's cast see. is crazy. Marion Cotillard, Ralph Fiennes, uh, John Cena. Uh, didn't they get Emma Watson? I'm honestly saying them off the top of my head. Yeah, so they had Selena Gomez, Remy Malik, Emma Thompson, Craig Robinson, Tom Holland, John Cena. Yeah, Ralph Fiennes, Octor, Octavia Spencer. Dude, just so many people, even more after that. Like That's not even including the actual people who are live action or live art real actors, not voice mm -hmm. actors. Mm -hmm. So that's a crazy budget. And with something like that, you have to make, you're shooting to make two times as much plus the marketing. So you want to get over $400 million. And the only other movies that aren't Marvel movies that Robert Downey Jr. you know, was the star of were the Sherlock movies that made over that money, over that much money. Every other movie he's ever made has never made $300 million. Mm -hmm. So this is just a crazy risk. For the, the studio. This is going to be really hard for them to make that money back, I think, at least. And they're dropping it in January. So, so you're saying it has to make $400 million? Yeah, this movie has to Why? make $400 million for it to be profitable because of just everything that goes into it. So you want $175 million, That's the budget. Then you have to make... You're probably going to put in $200 million just for the marketing on the... Then there's the incentives and all the companies that get a cut if it's profitable that have been involved with this picture. So that's according to Forbes. That's mm -hmm. what the report they put out on this film. Jesus, dude. So this, this could be the first, could be the first flop of the decade, to, <laughs> the next decade. Fuck yeah. We'll see though. I mean, it could, and on top of everything, if it doesn't, I feel like it's one of those movies too, that if it gets bad reviews, it could spiral it down even more, you know, mm -hmm. just with everything that's been going on behind the scenes of it. Because this movie was supposed to come out last April but got postponed because of the studio didn't think it was good enough. So they brought in a new director who, Jonathan Leibsman, this guy directed Wrath of the Titans, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, not great movies at all, to come in and direct it. Jesus, for real. Yeah. And then just the person on the crew came out on Reddit this week. So this could not even be true anyway. You could just be bullshitting it. Yeah. But he's saying that this first director pretty much went crazy on set. He was trying to punch through TVs. So he thought that RDJ could just go out there and in a day, this the animation team could just imagine, like have it on screen, what all the animals are doing when he just changed on the fly. Apparently they were changing scripts day of, even though they just had weeks of pre-work done for all these animals, you know what I mean? Because they have to have them all lined up and properly for the spots, for the set. Yeah, it's fucked, dude. 
<laughs> like, why would, what was this guy's problem? Was he on something? I don't know. I think this guy's just in over his head because he's like an Oscar winning director for writing. And he's directed movies that have been nominated for Oscars, but he's never done a kid's movie. He's never done a family-oriented thing. He's never done like a big budget movie with, you know, animated creatures. So he just didn't, I don't think he was the right guy for this role anyway. Why would you want to do Dr. Doolittle? Probably because the studio said, hey, if you do this for us, we'll do one of your other projects you want to do. We'll do a pet project. I'm, that's what I think it must be something like that, right? Oh, okay. I don't know how that sh- kind of shit works, so that makes sense. Yeah, I feel like that's probably what RDJ is trying to do with this too. Uh, Just because it seems risky, like a risky project. It seems stupid. It seems shitty. Yeah. This dude died, choose to die in the MCU to do shit like this. Do, do, yeah, know, do little. I thought you were going to do some like, take like a Leonardo DiCaprio type approach where you just wait and do hella good movies. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we'll see though. I think he was going to do little. Yeah. The trailer was definitely not what I was expecting. So I mean, we're, I'll give it a chance, but I don't know, man. It just... Just all this stuff behind the scenes seems very, just not a good sign. You know what I mean? To pull it all together and put something out within a year of all this shit going down like this. Yeah, and getting a replacement director like that, that the replacement director's that shitty, maybe they're yeah. like strapped for cash. I don't know. And they're changing scripts on the fly. They're changing scripts the day of when you have to plan all this kind of shit out before with animated stuff. Like that's that's crazy. Yeah, it's fucked. Did you read that part too where he said that this dude's... Oh, okay. So this is what this guy freaked out over. So when the guy was about to punch through his the TV, yeah. it was because there was a scene where there's supposed to be a talking goose. It wasn't on the screen while RDJ was talking. And he flipped out over this shit. And that's when he they apparently brought people in after this. Yeah, that shit's stupid, dude. You can't act like that. You can't act like a little fucking bitch. Yeah, this seems like the most unbelievable part of this shit that this guy's, the director's dog, apparently would only bark at people with ethnic backgrounds. (laughs) He just got this racist ass dog running around on set. (laughs) I know, that sounds ridiculous. Yeah, that's where I was almost like, all right, this report is ridiculous. But someone, (laughs) a reporter on this press tour, when this eventually starts making it, you know, it starts closer to come out in theaters. Someone should ask him about this question and see what happens. Find out if there's any truth to that. Because that's crazy. Racist dogs in 2019. God damn. <laughs> oh my goodness. Next, we got our El Camino review. So if you haven't seen the movie, Netflix, Breaking Bad, sequel to the story, cut off. That's it. That's all we got. Okay. So want me to go first on this? Yeah, I don't give a fuck. You can go first. <laughs> okay. You go first, you can go last, baby. No matter. So, El Camino, I wanted to say that I think Aaron Paul did really good just getting right back into that role, you know, that he sort of made him as an actor. Yeah. And just him doing, he, it felt like he played Jesse even in two different roles in this movie because he had to do Jesse, who's been through shit, has PTSD, just was in a hole in the ground for six months. And they, they did those flashback scenes. No, it was like a year, wasn't it? It was a long time. Those flashbacks before all that even just showing how... A different dude, like back in the show, Jesse, more than what happened. And that was one of the questions that if there was a way to keep going the story, it definitely would have been through his perspective and then showing how he dealt with all that. Because that was something they didn't really show at the end of the show, just what he dealt with in there. I like that. I felt we were right back in Breaking Bad World with it, picked up right where it ended. Yeah, and they didn't do any bullshit with him being alive, with Walter White being alive, which... I don't know why people would have wanted that. I felt like that wouldn't have made sense because it worked really well with him dying. No, dude. Why would you have him alive? It'd be fucking bullshit. Yeah. It'd make the ending of Breaking Bad, it'd make it be shitty. Yeah, no, I agree. Make it a shitty ending. And Vince Gilligan's too good of a storyteller to do, to fuck that up like that. Yeah, he's not going to do that. Yeah, and it's like, we would li- you'd think that just when he was leaving there, he's driving off, you think that maybe he's going away and he's going to get away happy, but... Obviously, that realistically, that's not what's going to happen. There's going to be a story after that to how he eventually does get away. In the final episode of Breaking Bad, did he have that big of a beard? Did he even have a beard like that? I don't think he yeah. did. Yeah, he did. No, he didn't. Mm-hmm. I don't think, well, dude, we don't know how, if he was down there for six months, for sure. And I don't think they no, really, well, I guess. I'm saying the, in the final episode, did Jesse have a beard like that? Yeah. What? Like the one that he was driving when he left away? Uh-huh. Really? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you fucking sure? I'm hundred percent. You want me to send you a picture? But his beard didn't seem as big as it was. Oh, it, it was. wasn't even close. It wasn't even close to as big. No. Oh, you mean just like the aspect that he probably grew that one naturally? Yeah, exactly. Let me look. I don't know. Okay, maybe I'm just a dude. That's it's total nitpicking, but it's just I don't know. It didn't look the same. His beard looked fucking just thick and fat. Where in like Breaking Bad, it was yeah. It looked like he grew it naturally. Check that picture I just sent you. Yeah. What about that pig? Dude, yeah. Well, he definitely has some sort of. Those are those are from the actual episode that I just sent you. And then here's one currently. I don't know. I thought they did okay with it. He probably was wearing a fake beard for this version. Fuck yeah. Uh, yeah, dude. See? This side-by-side has his beard a little thicker. But he... he eh. Thicker, that's dude. The... He looks like Jesus Christ. <laughs> a little thicker. Yeah, that's why I was like... They went the ham fuck? with the aesthetic. Yeah. Yeah, they probably just didn't have time to make him throw this shit. Because I'm sure they filmed it on the fly. Because they were so secretive with this production. It was 50 days and no one knew about that it even filmed, really. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh. And yeah. All right. So anyway, back on the review. Yeah. Dude, too bad they couldn't have done this sooner. Todd was looking fucking like he's been just eating mac and cheese on a steady diet. He was thick as fuck. Yeah, he looked bro. fucking old and fat. <laughs> I was going to say, okay, so the one main thing that he's did... He's fucking... Dude, get him out. He's thick boy, for sure. That was the worst thing. Biggest complaint, Todd. That was what I was going to say. My biggest complaint. Yeah, that was hard to make it feel like it just picked up right where it was because that dude was so fat, man. He had to be 40, 40 pounds, pounds heavier. heavier. 40 pounds of... Tobacco smoked, dude. He was big, and he and he didn't look young either. He looked old, dude. Yeah, Netflix. Yeah, nah. He's only thirty one in real ginger. life too. Looks like Fat Matt Damon. I don't know. He was a dick though, dude. He was a total <laughs> douche. We just roasting this fool, but goddamn, man, it's just how can they? Netflix got has the money to de-age Robert De Niro, Al Pacino. How can they not like defat this guy? There has to be a way. <laughs> well, that that I think he maybe he just didn't know that when they were going to do this movie. You know what I mean? He might have just got it last second. And they said, "Hey, everyone, get here, film these scenes," and he just showed up for one week. Filmed He's all in a good amount of them, dude. You know what I mean? Wasn't in that many scenes. Like there's a lot of flashbacks. Like half of it was all flashbacks. Yeah. Well, he was in a good amount, but I just meant that he could have been there. He might not have had to be there for the full two months shoot. You know what I mean? They would have just done his scenes when he. They probably filmed these scenes by when people could show up and be there for production just because of how secretive it was and all these people are working on other projects. But yeah, I mean, it feels like you could still give this guy a heads up a couple months before that. Hey, you should probably lose a little weight, man. Be- because the flashback where they're both at the um, the diner, uh, where they all, th- they're they both, where um, Jesse and Walt are at the diner, that felt like a legit scene from the show. Like Jesse felt not old and young and he had still had that the same demeanor and everything you're right dude he jumped back into that role real well the other flashback that i wasn't psyched about was i mean dude uh aaron paul put on a few pounds too he was like uh, yeah but yeah but i thought that he's close enough that it wasn't that bad it's it's been five years this guy's 39 40 years old now he's playing a 20 guy in his late 20s yeah, I, I didn't have a big problem with him. Well, the scene with him and Mike where they're on the river, I don't know. He didn't seem that young. That scene I didn't really care for either, I was going to say. The only thing that I think that that scene sets up is that they he says, I would go to Alaska or whatever Mike says. He says some shit about Alaska, and so which hints at the end of the movie. But yeah, he was looking crusty. The dude who plays Mike's looking old as hell too. <laughs> All, I mean, most of them are looking older for sure. This movie's been... It's been five or six years since this shit dropped, so... Five or six years? It's probably been more than that. When was the finale? 2011? No. 2013. Mm, okay. And they filmed this earlier this year, last year. Jesse must have told other people, though. Well, because obviously he told Badger and Skinny Pete that he wanted to go to Alaska, eventually. Because remember in the last... um In the finale... They're in the car with Walt, Badger and Skinny Pete, and they're like, man, I thought he went to Alaska. Yeah, he's just, that made sense for his character because he's been talking about it. Where he makes it to yeah, Alaska. Yeah, so that, 
the ending felt like a good send off. I know. I thought he was going to meet up with Brock eventually or something, but I guess he just sends a letter. Yeah, which might tip off the police, but hey, yeah, I imagine that dude, he sends it to that kid and it's going to, his grandma's going to open it and fucking tell the police. But dude, he's so long gone that there's no way that they find out where that's sent from or anything. Yeah. And there's no reason to think he's dead either. So they just chalk it up to, well, fuck, he got away. Dude, but how did it all get pinned on Jesse? That's not confused. That the, that like all the fucking gang members being killed. What do you mean? Weren't they pinning it on Jesse? No, they were just saying, hey, this person was here. He was involved somehow. They were, remember the reporter reporter was asking, do you believe this person was involved or involved or do you think he was a prisoner trapped underneath? But this dude had been involved with stuff before. They knew he was connected to Walter White, who had been on the run, remember? So he would have got arrested regardless. Yeah, because well, he was because he was gonna be an informant for Hank, so until the whole shooting. Yeah. Yeah, fuck. Yeah, until that scene, Oz, Ozymandias went down. But yeah, I mean, I just was saying, I thought overall Aaron Paul did pretty good jumping back into the dealing with some dude dealing with PTSD for real, trapped in this hole. I liked all the scenes. This one scene that stuck out for me was when they're out in the desert, dude. It reminded me so much of, I, I know I'm making a Game of Thrones comparison, but just reek with just being so yeah for real broken as a person that even right then he's not going to try to kill that guy. Even though they're out in the desert, literally he could just ferry the body, drive away. He'd probably yeah. have a day or two on the Nazis from catching him because they were what gone for the weekend. And even then, mm-hmm. he knew where the money. He knew that that guy had money hidden in his wall, right? Because that was the whole point of the flashback. So he just was broken, dude. And it just he, I just thought he did a really good job with all that. And even though that guy was fat as shit, he still just plays that role really good of this creepy Nazi who's. Fucking seems idiot. kind of polite, but is such a fucking cocksucker, dude. Yeah, just killing his, his housekeeper, and it just reminded me back to when he just killed that kid. He, he killed. Remember, they killed that kid. He kept his tarantula. That's where that tarantula was from. And then I think the most intense scene of this movie was definitely the fucking western style shoot off. Oh, dude! But come on, you saw that coming, right? Oh yeah, I mean, you, you knew that he had that gun, and that's why I liked it though, because he was just in complete control of the situation. Honestly, he went in there, and all he said was, "Hey, I just want eighteen hundred. But he knew if they tried anything, he was he was ready. That was a smart move by him. That's just good character development from the beginning of the show to just show that he can handle situations like this. Him, motherfucker. Don't, don't step to him. Yeah. When he does get the money too and then those fake cops come in and he's hiding under that mattress or whatever, that was a good scene too. I thought he was fucked then though. I didn't even really connect really? that they were fake until he called him out. Well, right when he said, what now? I was like, oh, fuck, they're not cops. Yeah. I, well, what were you thinking? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, right then, but I just meant when he, before that, dude, I was just, okay, yeah, that makes sense. There's cops all downstairs. He's fucked, but it turned out. No, dude. Nah. When he would say, when he was saying all that, I'm like, there's not fucking 10 cops downstairs. Two cops don't just go in. Like they would have all of them case the whole apartment. I knew that they were bullshitting. It sounded kind of fishy at first, but um, honestly, I was kind of like, damn, blap this motherfucker. I don't give a shit if he's a cop. <laughs> dude, he's talking shit on you. Fuck this dude. <laughs> Just blap him both. There, I think they're, if you're looking for a person of interest, I remember they were staking outside of Jesse's house with six cops. They had six cops outside his house. They're probably thinking of places he might go to. Why wouldn't he go to his captor's house? Maybe. They didn't know that he was, Todd was his direct, uh, what do you call it? Not overseer, I guess. They didn't know that. The cops The cops didn't know that. How do you know they don't know that? Dude, they don't know that. How do you know that they don't know that or that they <laughs> do not know that? What would, what would there be to lead them to believe that he was the one that took care of them? Maybe they knew somehow that guy was in with Walter White back in the year. I don't know. Because he didn't have the keys on him anymore because Jesse took it off him. What would there have been to... I'll tip the cops off to know that all they knew that they he was that he, he had his car. All that they knew was that he had his car, which was the fucking first car he saw, and that uh, Todd was connected to the gang. That's like all the cops knew. I'm just saying it's not outside the realm of possibility. It was a realistic situation. When his buddy was like, "Oh yeah, you, they're not going to get you," it, it was kind of obvious. Or or when his buddy was like, "There's no way you can get out of here." I mean. Sorry, not that they're not going to get you. 
when his buddy started chiming in after uh, on every single thing he was saying, I was like, dude, something's fucked here. I, uh, I mean, I thought the guy was being calm. He's just, he had a gun to his head and said, yeah, I think I counted six. And he's like, oh no, I counted eight. All right, whatever. I'm done arguing with you about the that cop shit. Fuck the cops, dude. <laughs> Fuck the police. <police. laughs> and then I, the, another funny scene was when he, because he was all cocky in that moment. He went to the other guy and was, says, you're not, you didn't really call the cops. You have more to lose than me. And the dude's just like, oh, they're right on time. That was a good scene too. That was a good scene. Yeah. Honestly, overall, I thought it was pretty solid. It felt more like an extended episode of Breaking Bad, but I guess that makes sense. It's based off that show. I still liked it. I thought it was a good send off for this character. Now we actually, this is the only thing I wanted to know is maybe what happened to him after this. I don't think they need to do anything after this. Yeah, exactly. Just wrap up Jesse's storyline. Yeah, he was such an important character. And it's funny because this was one of those characters that they wanted to kill in season one. Season five, they wanted him to commit suicide at one point. So then in the end, he's the only guy who really lives out of this shit. It is good. Yeah, the score was really good at some points in this show too. It just made it help that intensity of it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I liked it, dude. I liked all the flashbacks with him and Walter, dude. Fuck that. That one felt like it was straight from the show. Like they took that. Like they shot it back in the day. Yeah, that one they had to be super secretive for too. They, I was reading about this. They flew Brian Cranston in on a private jet so that no one knew he was in the fucking in Albuquerque. He was, none of them could be seen on set together. They were never seen on set together. He couldn't really, uh, Aaron Paul couldn't even really be seen with anyone on set together, honestly, because they wanted to keep it so secretive. And in that scene, when they're in the diner, everyone who's in there is a cast member because they didn't want, or sorry, a crew member and all that because they didn't want anyone to know about that shit. No way. And, and he's wearing a bald cap too, so it wouldn't be obvious if he shaved his head for some reason. Wow, that's crazy, dude. Shout out Skinny Pete and Badger too. Good friends. Yeah. Some real ones, man. For real. <laughs> Skinny Pete, the real one. I thought that was interesting too in the marketing that they show Skinny Pete getting interrogated in the trailer or one of those teasers. Oh, yeah, they did, huh? Yeah, so he did exactly what he said he was. He wasn't going to say shit. Fuck yeah. Dude, for real? I totally forgot about the trailer. That was good, dude. I don't really have anything else on the actual movie. I think more of the behind the scenes stuff's interesting, just how they got all this together. I was thinking, we, I'm surprised we didn't see Saul Goodman, too. I figured somehow you'd make a cameo. Or they could have put in a flashback, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Probably because they filmed, so the original cut, Vince Gilligan had a three-hour cut of this movie originally. Damn, no way. Yeah, around three hours. And Aaron Paul said they cut 30% of the movie, dude. That's, that's a lot. Wow. Yeah, so I bet he filmed. They're going to release that? I don't know. You gotta call up Netflix, ask him to get the director's cut. Fuck, Billy. So there could be like a Saul Goodman scene in that some other flashback. I know he had another flashback with his girlfriend that got cut with Jessica Jones. Oh, he did yeah. have a flashback. Oh, a di another one, a different one. It was like, it was a, an extended one of that. It was a, supposed to be longer, a scene that led into that more at the very end there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought most of the flashbacks were good, too. Just like we said, the only one that threw me off was just how fucking fat Todd was. Dude, yeah. Oh, and R.I.P. Robert Forrester. That's the dude who helped him get to Alaska. He actually died this week. Forgot about no that. No way. Died this weekend, yeah. Really? Yeah. Fuck. Rest in peace. There's another detail that came out. In an alternate ending, he was supposed to just get caught by the cops. No way. Yeah. I don't like that one. But his Vince Gill, that was what he was originally going to do when he started writing it. And his girlfriend just said, dude, there's no way you can have Jesse get caught after all this. This guy's been through shit. I mean, yeah, he under, that's what's cool about his character too, is that Jesse understands that he pretty much deserves a lot of that comes to, that has come to him, but he's also been through a lot of it. He deserved a, a good send off. I thought, or not to be in a cage anymore in prison. Yeah. I was, I was cool with it. Both his last two girlfriends have died and he woke up to the first one dead right next to him and then he had to watch his other girlfriend get killed, dude. Like, yeah. I mean, fucked. More Walter White's fault. Well, Walter White could have saved his girlfriend. Yeah. I'm not saying it's his fault. I'm just saying he had to go through that, you know? Oh, yeah. He's been through some shit. He deserves a good send-off. I'm not saying it's his fault. Yeah. 
Good. Yeah, for sure. And there was one point too where they read one of the endings was going to have them reading that letter that he sent to the kid. But I mean, I think that pretty much just said, you know what he's going to say. He just said, I'm sorry. You know, it's my fault. I'm sorry that you, I brought this on you. I'm sure it's what it says. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't need to get read. Yeah. That sounds good though. Yeah. I was trying to think. I don't know. Yeah. Just good attention detail. The filming was, the cinematography was great. Just even the fact that they showed, yeah, this dude was getting fucking whipped down in there. They showed more scars. He had legit scars from them putting cigs out on him. Yeah. Fucked up. Man, that dude went through some shit down in that hole, man. Fuck, dude. That was cool too. The PTSD part. I mean, not not the PTSD is cool, but you know, being down in a cell like that, being fucking taken advantage of and fucked with, you'd be so fucked up. I kind of, with Breaking Bad ending like that, you kind of forget about the toll that it would actually take on a human. Yeah, just him taking a shower brawl that back to him yeah. just getting hosed. Yeah, yeah, for real, man. It was a good movie. I mean, it's solid, you know? What would you rate out of 100? I mean, it wasn't like amazing, amazing. No, def- I wouldn't say it was amazing, but I thought it was It was good. Thought, it was pretty good. Yeah, it was a good wrap-up to his character. Yeah, if you just binge watch Bring- Breaking Bad and then watch El Camino right after, it'd be, it'd be perfect. I'd probably rate it 89, high 80s. Really? Damn. Yeah, I would say probably 84. It just That's doesn't have the impact of if i had watched you know back in when you watched just binge watched the whole series or at least i did senior mm-hmm. year of high school oh yeah no i agree like, that watched, series could have ended mm-hmm. with the finale and it'd been fine if i had watched el camino right after then it would have meant a lot more it does now you know it's just been a long time it's been a really long time yeah no i feel the that characters sure. have faded in my in my i don't know love yeah it's just not the same as when yeah. I first watched it. Yeah, for sure. I feel the same way. Still good, though. Mm-hmm. All right, shoot. I don't have anything else more to say. Is that it? Wrap it up? Me neither. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Do you have any? Uh, we got any reviews? Yeah, that's what I was just about to say, boy. Let's see. I'm going to Google if YL. Let's see if I can find why uh, Saul Goodman wasn't in it. Yeah, dude. I'm not seeing anything. I don't think they didn't have uh, Walter Jr. or any of those fuckers in it, but I didn't think that they were going to be in it. So. Oh, fuck Walter Jr. <laughs> 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 yeah, dude. All right, let's re- let's read some review. Let's read that review. All right. So reviews. Shout out to Tatum Tot. Thanks for listening. Appreciate your support. Thanks, Tatum Tot. I think that's it. That's it. All right. Yeah, shout out to Julian. Shout out Julian Gallegos. Follow us on Twitter at Not a Movie Pod at Culture Crave. DM us shit. You have theories you want to talk about? Let us know. We're down. Yeah, Dio's theories, um, and we'll read them out to the masses. To the masses. Anything else, Zach? Okay, we good then. Are right, we out? Yep, peace. How do you know this? That's what I do. I drink, and I know things. Truth is, <laughs> I am Iron Man. Rose? Well, we're going, we don't need Rose. When people ask you what happened here, tell them the North remembers. And here we go.